welcome D Lab, everybody. In this video, we're going to do a little science experiment. So, over the years on eBay, I've spotted these TR switches. I've really never paid much attention to them until this one came in hooked up to a Johnson 500. Now, that got my attention. So, I thought, you know, it's time to investigate this. Well, I did a little poking around online. And I found forums where many hams and CB operators are using these homebrew TR switches. My TR switch is the standard Dow key. I have never operated one of these units, but there are a few things here that really raise some concerns. So let's do a comparison between the Ice Cube switching system and a vintage Dow key relay. There's no reason to discuss the builder or where these things are made. I just want to see how this operates as compared to the vintage Dowkey. What we're going to do is utilize a Johnson Ranger in CW mode into a dummy load and I'm going to have a field strength meter monitoring the output off of each of these devices. But first, let's do a physical comparison of how a Dowkey is constructed versus the Ice Cube TR switch. All right, let's start with the Dow key. So this is the model DK60. It's totally shielded. Muting contacts are external. The Dow key is rated for one kilowatt of RF power. The SO239 insulators are Teflon. It is RF frequency rated from zero to 500 megahertz. The internal contacts are silver plated they're guaranteed low SWR and dB loss per Dow key. Let's take a look at the Homebrew Ice Cube TR switch. There is no shielding. The muting contacts are in the same plastic cover as the RF switching contacts. These contacts are silver cadmium oxide rated 10 amps at 240 volts AC. There is no RF data on the spec sheet. The SO239 connectors appear to be Teflon with gold plated contacts. The 8 pin octal socket appears to be a generic China made type that you find on eBay. Obviously, there's no information to base DB insertion loss. Now here's our test setup. We're going to repeat the same test for the Dow key versus the Ice Cube TR switch. We have a Johnson Ranger as our RF source. We're going to go through our TR switch to the Palstar dummy load. I have an old field strength meter. It has a telescoping antenna but I could not get that into position so I've clipped on a little alligator lead and just made a loop around the device. Alright, I'm going to turn this around. We're going to go up front and key the transmitter. So here we go. We're going to go into transmit mode. You're going to be able to see the plate current output power of the Ranger and any leakage that the field strength meter is seeing off of the Dow key relay. So we got about two S units. And of course if I'm an antenna it'll pick up more. Alright, let's switch over to the Ice Cube relay system and see how that one is. Okay, same setup. Now we're going through the Ice Cube switching system into the dummy load, have a loop around the relay Let's go watch the field strength meter. Okay, same deal. We're going to put the Ranger in CW mode. You're going to see the output power, plate current, and leakage on the field strength meter. Quite a bit more. There's a big difference between that and a Dow key. Well, that concludes my test. So now you can ask yourself these four questions. Does the ice cube relay emit harsh RF interference? Can the contacts withstand the high voltage that your transmitter outputs? Does your station suffer DB loss from the contacts and the octal plug on the ice cube relay system? Is the RF energy entering your receiver direct since the muting contacts are in the same plastic housing as the RF switching contacts? So it's your call, but amateur radio station N6TLU is sticking with the vintage Dow Key Relays.